DaVinci Resolve has six types of notes. We all use them when grading, but how well do we actually understand how they work? Well, I'm here to explain them all one by one. Let's start with the corrector notes. As the name suggests, they are used for applying corrections or adjustments to the image. Each one has two inputs and two outputs. Inputs are represented with triangles and outputs with squares. Green represents the color image with its three channels, those most often being the red, green and blue color components, and the blue ones represent the alpha channel, most often created by a power window, qualifier or magic mask. This limits the area in which this specific node can affect the image. In their simplest form, corrector nodes are used in series, in which case we can call them serial nodes. The output of one node leads to the input of the next, and the input and output of the first and last nodes are connected to the main source, which brings the image from the edit page, and the output which feeds it to all the viewers in Resolve, except for those in Fusion. What this means in practice is that if you desaturate the image completely in the first node, there's no way of getting those colors back in the second, because as far as that node is concerned, the image has always been black and white. And as you can see, you can use all tools on the color page in a single corrector node. Well, almost. You're limited to a single OFX per node. So what is the order in which all of these tools are processed? Well, that's a very good question and the reference manual comes to help. There's this chart called Image Processing Within Grades that details the exact order in which all tools in a single corrector node are processed. And as you can see, they're processed in series, as if each one had its own serial node. All of that works on the image's color channels, but what about the alpha? How is that handled? The alpha channel affects how much each pixel of the image is being manipulated, an opacity control for the node, if you will. And this alpha channel can either be an input coming from another node or an external mat, be created within the node by power windows and qualifiers, or a combination of the two. Finally, the shortcuts for creating serial nodes are Alt or Option and S for creating a serial node after the currently selected node, Shift and S for one before, and Alt or Option and O for an outside node. This one creates a serial node that takes its alpha channel from the previous node and inverts it. This means that it'll be targeting everything that the previous node didn't. Moving on, we have the Parallel Mixer. It has at least two inputs and one output. All green, meaning it works on the color channels of our image signal. On the surface, all it does is combine all the changes made to the image by the nodes connected to it. But to make that happen, it actually has to backtrack through the node tree to find the exact point where the signal diverges into the multiple branches. Then calculate the difference that each branch has made to the image compared to the point where it diverged, and finally apply those changes to the initial signal. That's quite a few steps, but what we get as a result is the ability to apply different adjustments to the same initial signal. For example, if I have multiple tools that affect the image based on hue, all of them should see the same original image to make sure that they are qualifying the same areas as the same color. Here I have the pixel tools hue shift crosstalk and hue shift hue DC tills. Links in the description. Both split the image into seven hue bands red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and skin. Now I can make the broad strokes in hue shift crosstalk and finish things off by manipulating individual hue bands with hue shift hue. Note that even though crosstalk shifts hues in a major way, both DC tills, hue targets target the exact same areas, as the initial image they're seeing and making their qualifications based on is the same. By contrast, if I were to put them in series, one of them would have to come before the other, and thus change the hues that the other one is seeing, and as a result, well, the qualification would be different between the two. The shortcut for creating parallel nodes is Alt or Option and P. If there isn't a parallel mixer connected to the corrector node you have selected, one is created automatically, along with a second corrector node. After that, any new corrector nodes are connected to the existing parallel mixer. Then we have the layer mixer. At first glance, this will look very similar to the Parallel Mixer. It also has at least two inputs and one output, and once again, only working on the color channels. 
However, it is different in how it works. You can think of it as a calculator. It takes the first input, that being the top one, and applies the second input to the first using some mathematical operation. These operations are called composite modes. By default, normal is selected. You can think of this as placing the second input on top of the first, like with tracks on a timeline, except the order is reversed. Whatever is present on the second input will be composited on top of the first layer. In this case, the whole image gets overwritten. But if I create a power window on the second input, we can see the first input coming through where the second is transparent. As another example, the add composite mode simply adds the two signals together. If both input 1 and 2 are the same, this would result in everything being twice as bright, identical to setting gain to 2 in a serial node. The reference manual does a great job at explaining what each of these composite modes does under the title More About Composite Modes. Next up we have the key mixer. This is the only node that solely works on the alpha channels of the signal. It's used for combining them in various ways. Let's say you want to combine the alpha channels of two existing corrector nodes into a single mat used in a third one. Simply create a key mixer and connect the alpha outputs of the two corrector nodes to the key mixer's inputs. By default, this merges them together, but there are various options for combining them under the key palette. And finally, we have the last two, the splitter and combiner nodes, which are almost always used in tandem. They split the three color channels into three separate branches with the splitter node and then combine them again with the combiner node. The splitter node duplicates the red channel to all three channels for the first output, green to all three for the second and blue to all three for the third output. That means that if you monitor any of these branches using the highlight mode, what you see is a black and white image. That's simply because if all three channels are equal, you get a black and white image. But now on the combiner side, it takes the respective channel from each input and actually ignores the rest. The first channel from the first input, the second channel from the second and the third channel from the third input. This allows for using grading tools on a single channel at a time without having to worry about affecting the others. And the shortcut for adding these two into your node tree is Alt or Option and Y. Okay, we now know what each node does, but when should we use one over the other? In my experience, most work is done in serial and parallel nodes. If you don't know which one to use, just use a serial node. With parallel nodes, well, I use them mostly for relighting and hue qualified tools, such as the hue versus curves, color slice, and some DC tells such as the pixel tools hue shift lineup. And I definitely do not put any blur or sharpening operations in parallel nodes, as those can and will create artifacts. I also recommend building your own fixed node tree, but that is a topic for another video. I'm Gaur, see you next time.